So I was going to try and think up some witty and elaborate intro for this video, but it's Monday morning, I'm knackered, can't really be bothered, so best camera phones, let's go. However, I would like to just quickly point out, you don't need to spunk out an absolute fortune on an expensive flagship smartphone to get some decent camera tech these days. You'll find plenty of great budget to mid-range mobiles for just a couple hundred quid plus that will do the job nicely. And I have rounded up my selection of the best budget-friendly camera phones right now in 2022 if you are on a tighter budget. Now, without a doubt, the Google Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro are two of my favourite smartphone shooters right now, with a majestic camera spread right across the arse end of these fantastic flagships. For the newest generation of Pixel blowers, Google has completely overhauled the camera hardware, cramming in a 50 megapixel sensor that's two and a half times bigger than the Pixel 5s. So Google isn't relying quite as heavily on the software smarts when it comes to grabbing great looking pics in low light and tricky conditions. No matter your choice of standard or pro, you can bet your nipples that you'll get natural looking shots both day and night, complete with accurate skin tones and impressive results in HDR situations. It's straight up a case of point and shoot here, no brain activity is needed at all. And for the Pixel 6 series, Google has added in some fresh new camera features that you can have a bit of a play around with, the likes of the action pan for instance, which just adds a bit of motion blur to your more dynamic scenes. And unfortunately these new features did mostly turn out to be a gimmicky sack of pants, although I did love the editing tool which wipes out any pesky background stragglers. Now while both the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro sport an ultra wide angle lens which offers a pulled back view when needed, only the Pro offers up an optical zoom lens for getting closer to the action. Besides that you're getting basically the same great bit of camera tech either way. Home movie results aren't as strong as some rivals and if you are after a dependable selfie cam then you will definitely want to look elsewhere as those front firers are a bit of a letdown. But if you're all about everyday stills, well the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro are simply the best out there and I've done a full in-depth camera review of them comparing the two uh, right here on Techspert. Now if you live in the States you can also grab the Pixel 5a for roughly half the cost of those flagship phones and while it is older camera tech, this mid-range mobile is one of the absolute best camera phones at this price, once again pumping out natural looking snaps in almost any scenario. Of course annoyingly here in Blighty you can't get the Pixel 5a unless you import it, but good news fellow Brits, the Pixel 6a, this year's successor to the 5a, is dangling enticingly on the horizon like a cold pint on a red hot day. Should be launching basically any week now, so if you can hold on just a wee bit longer, hopefully it'll actually come to the UK and do the business. Now a hot rival for the Pixel 6 smartphones comes courtesy of Apple with its latest iPhone 13 blowers and they're just as flamboyant camera design. If you want the beefiest hardware out there, you'll need to spunk out a grand or so for the Pro or the Pro Max models, which sport a triple 12 megapixel setup. Like the Pixel 6 Pro, this can capture pics with an ultra wide angle lens or a telephoto zoom when the standard view isn't quite enough. While colour reproduction isn't as accurate as those pixels, you do get a reasonably natural result, again with a simple point and shoot vibe. The iPhones are almost as good in low light and ambient light with a nippy LiDAR sensor for fast focus. However, the real benefit here is the video chops as the iPhone 13 Pro and the Pro Max can both record some very slick looking footage at 4K resolution, especially impressing with some dependable image stabilization. Don't have the cash to spunk out on these super priced Apple blowers, or maybe you simply don't fancy cramming something roughly the same size and weight as an average house brick into your pants every day, well, no worries. Because the iPhone 13 mini is actually my favourite of the new phones because it's pleasingly compact, if still somewhat chunky, and the camera tech is still proper decent. Apple has scrapped the LiDAR scanner and the telephoto shooter and the primary 12 megapixel sensor is slightly different here on the iPhone 13 mini but you'll still get some solid everyday shots. Even in quite testing conditions, your photos won't be too far off what you see with the naked eye, although subjects in motion do often come out blurry if the lighting isn't just right. And I personally found the iPhone 13 mini was just as capable as its much bigger, much more expensive siblings when it comes to selfies as well, once again sporting a 12 megapixel front facing shooter. And if you want to know more, I've done your full reviews of the iPhone 13 mini as well as the iPhone 13 Pro Max right here on Techspert. Another magnificent camera phone that hit the UK in 2022 is the Oppo Find X5 Pro. This is a gold star smartphone in pretty much every area from the excellent battery life to the tip top performance and that satisfying user experience. But the real highlight here is that versatile camera setup even if the telephoto lens isn't quite as impressive as some rivals. 
The primary sensor is Sony's IMX766, which has been used by quite a lot of smartphones recently, but Oppo has added extra smarts in there to ensure top quality results. So for one, you've got some next level five axis image stabilization built into this thing, supposed to help you out with your low light photography. You've also got a lens which is constructed from glass and that'll help prevent any, you know, halo and effects or the light based shenanigans that might bugger up your shot. And most importantly, photos are processed by Oppo's own Marisilicon Imogen NPU rather than the Snapdragon chipset that runs the show. But does this actually make for more realistic, good looking pics? Well, the Oppo Find X5 Pro is a very dependable snapper at least 9 times out of 10. The majority of my test shots taken in auto mode came out remarkably true to life with similar results to Google's excellent Pixel 6 smartphones. HDR situations are generally well handled with plenty of details still popping up in those darker areas and not much flaring in the lighter bits, although I definitely did see some saturation in some of my test photos. Those colours occasionally come out a little bit bleached, nothing extreme but it definitely does make your pic look less pretty. Good news if you're a night owl because I got next to no blur in my evening shots thanks to the excellent stabilisation even after I'd quaffed quite a few shandies. Although if your subject is moving as you take the shot this will result in some blurry shenanigans. But colour reproduction is again close to natural even when the light is rather sparse and you still get a good amount of detail crammed into every frame. The camera software has actually been updated a couple of times since I started testing out the Oppo Find X5 Pro, although I haven't noticed any real change in the performance to be perfectly honest. I'm kind of hoping that they do manage to deal retroactively with some of the saturation issues though. Now one of the snazzy exclusive new features here are the three new Hasselblad Master style filters as designed by a trio of pro photographer dudes. And they are Radiance, Serenity and Emerald. My favourite is definitely Radiance because this turns the sky a crazy cartoonish colour that makes every outdoor photo really stand out. You've also now got the lovably bonkers Hasselblad X-Pan mode which replicates a vintage shooting experience with a panorama style 65 by 24 aspect ratio. I'm not sure when this would ever really come in useful to be honest but whatever it is fun to bugger about with occasionally. And the Oppo Find X5 Pro also serves up a 50 megapixel ultra wide angle lens with a 110 degree view and the image processing is once again powered by Marisilicon like all the other cameras here. If the lighting is strong you'll generally capture natural tones again although you do often end up with colder photos in sort of lower light but even then you'll generally still get crisp photos stuffed with detail and it is a proper lifesaver when you're trying to shoot touristy pics of massive buggers like this thing. And last up is the 13 megapixel telephoto lens with its 2 times optical zoom. You don't get any periscope tech here unfortunately, so this isn't as effective as some rivals like the S22 Ultra. This maxes out at a 20 times zoom and to be honest there's no real point in going above 10 times zoom level because at that point things are generally starting to look a bit fuzzy and occasionally not quite in focus. Still at that 10 times level I found I got pretty much always a consistently good shot of a distant subject. You could also punch in towards a living subject like a fluffy kitty cat without intruding in their personal space. Now let's shift on to video which you can capture up to 4K resolution at either 30 or 60 frames per second. Even at that Ultra HD setting you'll get smooth visuals when you're moving and shooting thanks to the excellent stabilisation while the image quality in general is crisp and appealing. The Find X5 Pro works well in HDR situations capturing stronger detail in the lighter and the darker areas compared with some of the competition. You can zoom in and out easily enough and the phone automatically swaps between the lenses to suit without too jarring an effect. Noise levels are minimal when you're shooting at night as well courtesy of that good old Mazza processing unit although this does tend to drain the battery life quite quickly. And no real complaints on the audio side, the phone captures everything going on all around without much wind distortion when things do get a bit gusty. And last up that 32 megapixel selfie cam is another solid effort. Snap away in sunnier climbs and you'll still enjoy sharp, well-balanced pics, no worries. Those filters are back in action as well, although Radiance ain't quite as effective with this lens sadly. In more ambient light you will get softer results and once again some blur as well if anyone actually dares to move, so you'll definitely want to pause and freeze. But the Oppo Find X5 Pro can automatically switch viewing angles to fit in extra heads when needed, which is a nice touch. If you don't have over a grand to spunk on your new smartphone, well maybe check out the regular Oppo Find X5 instead, which costs a few hundred quid less, but still packs some excellent optics. Now, Samsung's S22 Ultra certainly got plenty of YouTubers spaffing in their shorts as usual this year, and while it isn't one of my absolute favourite phones of 2022, especially in this here Exynos flavour, there is no denying that those optics are impressive. 
If you want the Samsung smartphone with the best camera tech right now and you've got enough cash stuffed in your mattress to chalk a barracuda, then you should be satisfied. The S22 Ultra churns out good looking photos 9 times out of 10 with very little effort. I did see a little saturation in some of my test photos when the sun was being a proper knob and shining in a really awkward place, but in most circumstances the S22 Ultra can happily deal with strong lighting and deep contrast. That focus is fast acting, as is the image processing, so you'll rarely miss a shot because the camera can't keep up. Indoor shots can certainly still look a little soft and warm, unless the lighting is particularly good, but the S22 Ultra can still make the most of the situation more often than not, as long as your subject isn't doing anything annoying like moving about the place. Any flapping can really flummox this phone. And at night, the Ultra really excels compared with many rivals. Only the very best phones like the Oppo Find X5 Pro and the Pixel 6 can replicate a scene so vividly with so little light to work with. The dedicated night mode can also help brighten up things a bit when needed. Meanwhile, the ultra-wide angle shooter serves up an eye-catch and pulled back view when you're snapping some scenery and without too much distortion or other issues. Colours are a bit off at night and in low light, but overall it's still one of the better efforts out there. However, the real reason to get the Ultra over other Samsung smartphones is the ridiculous space zoom. Up to around the 30 time zoom mark, you'll still get sharp detailed shots, which is an absolute godsend when you're trying to snap wildlife or kids without intruding on the action. It even works pretty well at night, although whatever the conditions, once you pass that 30 time zoom level, you will notice that the detail in your pics drops quite dramatically, and by 50 times and above, things are looking decidedly dire. As ever, Samsung has piled a ton of bonus camera modes into the Ultra, including a food mode which does actually make your grub look more appetising. The portrait mode usually works pretty well, adding a convincing bokeh style effect to your photos, although if you are unhappy you can always reverse the effect afterwards. And then there's my personal favourite, the single take mode, which spasses out a whole bunch of quirky photos and video clips captured over a short time frame, definitely perfect for shooting your kids' random antics. I also highly rate the Samsung S22 Ultra when it comes to the home movies. That stabilisation is fantastic, even at 4K resolution. You can actually shoot smooth looking footage when you're dangling from a jeep and even when you're aiming at a moving subject while using the telephoto lens. Although don't zoom in too far or yes this will likely happen. Swapping between the different lenses is a relatively smooth experience giving you the flexibility to zoom in and out with just a quick tap while recording. Moving subjects look smooth on playback and, as with snapping photos, as long as the lighting conditions are decent, you will get plenty of detail packed into every frame. Shooting video at night isn't much of a problem either, if not quite as impressive as the Find X5 phones. Things can get a bit grainy, but no worse than with many other handsets. An audio pickup is just as good. My test videos boast rich stereo sound with clear recording from all directions, but favouring whatever is directly in front of the lens. The selfie shooter does a decent job too. Like the rear cam, this can handle strong lighting without having a breakdown, while the view can be expanded if you want to fit in more mates or more background action. Again, in low light the results can be a bit soft and grainy and you will want to keep your hands super steady to avoid any blur. Not an easy task when clutching a massive beer, having already drunk two massive beers. For a bit less cash you can always grab Samsung's regular Galaxy S22 or the S22 Plus instead. The regular S22 was the one I really wanted to love as it's one of very few smartphones released in 2022 you could actually just about get away with calling compact. Unfortunately, despite boasting strong media chops and the usual enjoyable One UI experience, the Exynos version of the S22 is crippled by dreadful battery life. I'd recommend grabbing the Plus model instead, sadly it isn't as compact of course, but you'll not be desperately scrambling for the charger at 5pm, which is always a bonus. And no matter your choice, you'll once again get some respectable camera tech that once again allows for brain-free shooting and is absolutely brimming with bonus features. For your photos, yeah, the S22 does still occasionally boost those colours to make a scene look more appealing, but not as bad as some Samsung blows of the past. This phone is fantastic when it comes to capturing action shots of kids, cats and other mobile subjects. The shutter speed is generally fast enough to tap and snap lots of pics in quick succession. Unless you're snapping away in low light, that is, in which case you'd be waiting a good couple of seconds for each image to be captured and processed. 
Still, the Galaxy S22 generally copes well with strong light and contrast. I only really saw any real saturation when I was practically shooting into the sun. And when you move indoors or to darker areas, the S22 still copes well, capturing enough finer details so your photo will look good when you chuck it up onto a TV or monitor. Tin as good in low light as the Pixel 6 series smartphones or the Oppo Find X5 series as well, but it'll do the job. The primary camera sensor is once again joined by a 12 meg ultra wide angle lens, which does as well as expected, proven up to the task of snapping more dramatic results. And while the 10 meg telephoto shooter with a 3x optical zoom isn't a patch on the Ultra's space zoom shenanigans, it's still very handy for getting closer to your subject without disturbing them. But of course, this wouldn't be a Samsung smartphone without like a gajillion different bonus camera modes. That portrait mode is as impressive as always, allowing you to adjust the severity of the bokeh after you take the shot, although the edge detection does occasionally get a bit janky. My personal favourite, however, is still that single take mode, which is great when your kids or pets are up to something. This not only captures a short video clip, but it also serves up a variety of filtered pics and comedically bizarre GIF style efforts that are highly shareable. Standard video can be captured at up to 8K resolution, which is a hit and miss affair. I prefer keeping the S22 at Ultra HD level with a choice of 30 or 60 frames per second filming. Picture quality is ruddy great, even with lots of motion in the shot. And once again, the visuals aren't too troubled by tricky conditions like high contrast scenes. Audio is clearly captured from all directions. And even when things are a bit breezy, that sound wasn't distorted much at all. Overall top stuff, though the Oppo Find X5 still has it beat in low light. And last up, the S22 serves up another 10 meg selfie cam, which may have a low megapixel count compared with many rivals, but I was happy enough with the results. Processing times are again long in low light, but you don't end up with much grain and there's enough room to fit in plenty of heads when needed. Now one camera phone that is a bit trickier to track down here in the West, but is well worth that effort, is the Vivo X80 Pro. This sports some seriously premium specs, including the Snapdragon HN1 chipset with dedicated cooling tech for gaming fans, plus a big old battery with 80 watt wide and 50 watt wireless charging support. You probably won't be particularly shocked to learn, given its inclusion in this list, that it is the camera tech that really helps to elevate the Vivo X80 Pro above many of its peers. Those lenses are coated in Zeiss's T-Star glass, which helps to prevent ghosting and other light-related issues from buggering up your perfectly good shot. While you also get Vivo's exceedingly clever 5-axis gimbal stabilisation built in to help you get crystal clear super sharp shots even in very low light. With help from this clever hardware, the Vivo X80 Pro's 50 meg Samsung GNV sensor combined with the V1 Plus image processor spaffs out some impressively natural looking photos with poppy colours where appropriate. These pics were among the best I've seen outside of Google's fresh flagships. Even in strong daylight, I was impressed with the results thanks to the Zeiss glass. It's incredibly rare to see any kind of flaring or saturation. And in more ambient light, when shooting indoors or in the evenings, you can once again expect a crisp photo with limited noise and accurate colour reproduction. The Vivo X80 Pro also packs a 48 megapixel ultra wide shooter and a dedicated 12 megapixel portrait snapper using Sony's IMX663 sensor, ideal for snapping your subject up close while blurring out the background. And last up, there's an 8 meg periscope lens, which helps you get great family or wildlife shots without getting right up in their grill. You can record video at up to 8K resolution, but I stuck with 4K for most of my testing time. I was more than happy with what I saw. Plenty of detail, punchy colours, highly respectable image stabilisation, and the audio came through just as cleanly. And last up, the 32 meg selfie cam is again a bit good, whether shooting in low light or brighter environments. Basically, I'm struggling to find anything to complain about with this camera tech. It's reliable at pretty much any time of day, even on full auto. And also, if your budget can't quite reach up to the Vivo X80 Pro, well, definitely don't sleep on the V23 Pro, which is another fantastic Vivo smartphone, which packs great camera tech, again, capable of capturing natural looking snaps in almost any conditions. And that one will come in at a cheaper price. Two other flagship blowers that really impressed me this year are the Xiaomi 12 and the beefier Xiaomi 12 Pro. I'm actually personally more drawn to the regular model as it's compact and yet still boasts better battery life than that Pro model. But if you want the best camera tech, then you should consider upgrading to the Pro version, which rocks Sony's IMX707 sensor rather than that popular IMX766, which is stuffed inside of the Xiaomi 12. Some extremely fascinating numbers there for you, but the big question is, is the Xiaomi 12 Pro actually any good for snapping everyday pics? 
Well, you certainly get some good looking shots out of this thing on full auto, even when the lighting isn't ideal. However, do not expect natural looking photos like you get from the Oppo flagship or the Pixel 6 series. The Xiaomi 12 Pro tends to boost colour tones to make everything look a bit more vibrant, regardless of whether you leave the AI on or knock it right off. Personally, I appreciated some of the more vivid results, but it would have been nice to have the option to capture a punchy pic or something a bit more natural. No complaints at all when I was shooting living subjects, especially those who tend to leap about as if several parts of their anatomy had suddenly burst into flame. The 12 Pro boasts eye tracking as well as motion tracking focus, and this works beautifully, keeping even rapidly departing children and pets as sharp as possible at all times. At night, when you're snapping away in darker environments, the Xiaomi flagship again proves one of the best around right now. Image capture usually only takes a second or two, processing is just as quick, and you're left with a bright photo boasting impressive detailing and minimal grain. However, I will say that the regular Xiaomi 12 also does a bang up job in those low light scenarios courtesy of that IMX 766. I've actually done some side by side camera comparisons in my Xiaomi 12 unboxing with that and the Pro. If you want to see the difference between them, the Pro tends to produce slightly brighter photos with a bit less grain in those low light scenarios, but there's not a massive gulf of difference between them. You also have a 50 meg ultra wide angle shooter that you can swap to for a more pulled back view with similar visual results and only a wee bit of distortion around the edges. And last up, the 50 meg telephoto shooter offers a basic 2x optical zoom, the same as the Oppo Find X5 Pro, but inferior to quite a few flagships out there. It's still more than good enough for getting artificially closer to your subject without disturbing them though, although don't expect sharp returns if you punch in above the 10 times level. That said, the Xiaomi 12 Pro does serve up a super moon mode which can be used to snap that big ball of rock dangling in the sky with impressive clarity, if that happens to tweak your wing nuts. So far so good, and I also appreciated the video results spaffed out by the Xiaomi 12 Pro. You've got 8K recording chops if you're into all of that. Personally, I kept the phone set at 4K resolution where you can capture footage at 30 or 60 frames per second. And you've even got an HDR10 Plus option when dealing with dodgy contrast. Stabilisation is strong, tracking is once again dependable, and even when the lighting ain't great, you can expect respectable detail packed into every frame. An audio pickup also gets a thumbs up, so overall, lovely stuff. And hey, up front you've got a 32 megapixel selfie shooter, which is a good one for your Instagrammable moments, if you don't mind sharing every bag and wrinkle with the world. Although you've got the usual beauty mode guff if you'd rather look like a shot mannequin. And again, at night, no worries, the 12 Pro does a solid job. And also, camera fans should definitely check back again in July because Xiaomi is set to launch its massive mega new Xiaomi 12 Ultra smartphone. And the interesting thing here is this is his first phone with camera tech co-developed with Leica, who is Huawei's foremost best bud. And of course, Huawei and Leica combined produce some really stunning smartphone cameras. So very interested to see what they'll do with Xiaomi. I've also got to give a shout out to the Huawei Mate 50 Pro, which boasts some incredible optics that are superior to pretty much anything out there in low light and ambient conditions. However, as is sadly the way with Huawei these days, you don't get any of those lovely Google services packed onto the P50 Pro, which could be a deal breaker for many. And if you know your way around a DSLR, chances are you'll get on well with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. This fresh flagship is just hit in the UK and boasts the usual versatile professional camera tools and incredibly fast eye tracking, along with an upgraded telephoto shooter and the ability to capture 4K 120 frames per second video with all of those main camera sensors. Sadly, Uncle Spurt has not had the chance to check out the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV yet. Hopefully soon, kiddies. Hopefully soon. But what I would say is if you are looking for a basic point and shoot, just basically aim the smartphone at something, press a button and there you go, there's a stunning photo. Maybe stay away from the experience because they're definitely more geared towards people who like to mess around with controls manually and who do know their way around a DSLR. And as I mentioned way back at the start of this video, if you don't have much cash to spunk on your new blow, well definitely check out my roundup of the best budget friendly camera phones that you can get right now in 2022. But as just one quick recommendation, one mobile manufacturer who's really impressed me so far in 2022 is Realme, who have gone with the very wise tactic of basically just slapping that Sony IMX 766 sensor into every smartphone it can. I got on very well with the Realme GT2 Pro, which boasts impressive specs for a price that won't have you drop into your knees and gnashing your teeth. Despite some issues with Haloin in really bright conditions, this turns out some great looking shots with minimal effort. And for around three to four hundred quid, you can grab yourself the Realme 9 Pro Plus, which once again spots that IMX 766 sensor and again does a bang up job for your everyday snaps. 
And anyway, that right there, kiddies, is my roundup of the very best camera phones you can grab yourself thus far in 2022. Of course, lots of big launches still on the horizon, the likes of the Pixel 6a and of course the Pixel 7 new flagship phones. Apple will no doubt be spaffing out some more iPhones come September time. Got the Xiaomi 12 Ultra to look forward to, lots of other stuff, no doubt. It's been a busy bloody year. So it'd be great to hear from you guys in the comments which phones are you looking forward to or which camera phone have you been using which you absolutely adore and please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on all those fresh new camera phones as they're launching and have yourselves a bloody good rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!